Hi, I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop, and we have Jill Finley of Jewelry Studio today. She's designed this beautiful bows and toes quilt using her twirl collection, and she's got these beautiful ballet slippers on this quilt, and today she's gonna show us how to applique the easy way. Since this little applique design is a little more complex, we're going to start with something simpler, so let's set that aside. And I've made um, this just this cute little pillow, and it has some very simple shapes that will be a good way to, to demonstrate and to learn applique. And um, this little pillow also uses the same fabric collection that um, we have in the Bows and Toes quilt. This is called Twirl. And these are the pieces from the collection that are the um, basics collection, and it's called uh, Jams, Jams and Jellies. And, uh -huh. and it's a very beginner project, so anybody can tackle this just starting off, right? Yep, okay. yep, you bet. So let's get ready to prep that. For my method, the first thing we do is we use freezer paper, but instead of just a single sheet, I use four layers. So I take, um, I trace my pattern onto a single layer, and then um, put those all shiny side facing down on your ironing surface, and just press them together with a hot iron. Now because um, freezer paper will stick to your ironing surface, and then you just pull it up, and it will restick again. It's going to make those layers fuse together. When I'm done fusing them, I'll have one dull side, the top side, and one uh, sticky side, the shiny side, on the bottom. And are you using steam while you're doing this? Nope, I don't use steam for this part, because it kind of wrinkles the paper. It doesn't really matter if the paper's wrinkled, but it is, you know, it's a little smoother if you don't. So now, you can see here's the, the four layers, and here's the nice um, fused material. It really makes a heavy material uh -huh, to make your template out of. Okay, so I've cut a template, and I've already cut this out, and um, I'm going to put it on the wrong side of my fabric. And I, I, I like to place my template kind of on um, the bias, mm -hmm. because if my long straight edges are on the bias, then it's easier for them to curve up over the, the shape, and it's, it just works a little better. You don't have to. If you want to um, have a specific motif that you're using, you, can, you don't have to be on the bias. It's just a little easier. And do you have the shiny side down? Right I now? do. Okay. Uh -huh. Shiny side down. So now this has fused, and when freezer paper fuses to your fabric, it's just temporary. See, it just comes off, comes off. but it will stay in place for a little bit. It's kind of like when you um, sit on a plastic lawn chair and you stick to it. Yeah. So you're not permanently stuck to it, it just kind of is a little sticky. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. This is fused, and we're going to cut out around this shape, leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it. Whenever I have a, a dotted line on my template, like I do right here, um, I don't leave a seam allowance on that, because that section is going to be under another piece, so I don't have to have that edge turned. So. Is there anything special about the scissors you're using? No. Okay. They're just regular uh, fabric scissors. Okay. okay, so now I'm ready to um, turn this edge over so that I won't have a raw edge. And because I didn't have a seam allowance on this dotted edge part, you can see that I've just cut it right, right even, it. With, even with the template. Okay? So I use spray starch. And any old spray starch will work that just uh, you buy at the grocery store. Spray some of it into the cup or into a lid or something, and that just will foam up and then it will liquefy as the air goes out of it. And I use a little stencil brush so that um, a stencil brush is nice because it holds a lot of liquid. And I just paint the seam allowance of my piece. Just quickly paint just the seam allowance, okay? Set that aside. And then I use an awl or a, a tailor's awl or a stiletto, and I use that so that I don't get burned. Okay, so I'm just going to run the iron across here, and Kimberly, I like to use the big, a big flat uh, side of my iron so that I can get more surface area, and you'll notice that as I push the iron across, it just kind of gathers the fabric and mm -hmm. eases it up over the curve. I just leave my iron there long enough for that starch to dry. And you're still not using steam right, right. now? Right. No steam this time, because I'm trying to dry the starch. So basically, see how that has uh, turned mm -hmm. the edge over? Now I'm going to turn it around and do this other side and I'm going to use the flat side of my iron and watch how it just kind of, see how it kind of gathers the fabric? Now I'm going to hold this edge down with my stiletto so that I don't unfold the fold that's already been done. And do you, is there a time period you need to leave that starch no, on there? No, just long enough till it's dry. Okay. It doesn't, just, we're, we're trying to just make that fold have a nice crease so that it will stay in, in place. I turned it over and press it from the top and now my piece has a nice smooth edge and all of the, um, Raw edges are turned to the back, and I, you notice that at a point here, I'll have a little extra flag of fabric sticking mm -hmm. out. 
don't don't cut that off and okay. don't worry about it. We tuck that in as we're sewing, okay. so we don't need to worry about that now. And then I just take my template out, and I'm ready to do it again. And so you just keep more. reusing the same template over and I over. Can, I can use that template. I'm going to do another one quickly so that you can see. I'm going to use that template um, probably about five or six times until it quits sticking and then throw it away and get a new one. So when you have your starch, if you let it sit five minutes on your piece or ten minutes? Well, if it's dried out, you'll have to wet it or restarch, yeah. And um, it's important to note that this cutting of this out um, with the seam allowance doesn't have to be perfect. Just eyeball it. The thing that does need to be really smooth and perfect is your template. So when you're cutting your template, use long uh, strokes of your scissors and make a nice smooth edge. And this other edge doesn't matter because it's going to be tucked under inside. Mm -hmm. So I just paint a little bit of starch on the seam allowance. And you just get these paint brushes at any type of chain store, right? Uh, yes, you can get them at an um, art supply store or um, a craft store, something like that. So I'm just going to run my, my iron across here. And the, the awl is handy because I can kind of pull the fabric edge over. And um, I know you've seen me do this, but this just do it one more time so that you can get that in your mind. It's really quick and fast and easy and really accurate. It is. And it just um, makes a perfect. when I've got a nice big iron, I have a big surface area so I can be faster, very quick. Now I want to show you a couple different shapes so that we can get um, the idea of all the different kinds of shapes. Now this little leaf has a sharper point. So we're going to end up with a little bit more fabric sticking out at the tip, at the okay. flag. So the, sa the very same thing, I've just I've taken the uh, template and pressed it onto the back of the fabric. And now I am pressing the edge up over the template, long enough for that starch to dry. Turn this around and then I'll do the other side. Now I'm going to hold the, the previously pressed side so that I don't undo it. And then start right there. And see, I just move my iron down and it just moves that edge up over. I'm going kind of slow so you can see. And then I'll just hold that down and get that edge too. And now press it from the top just so that you've got a nice crisp finish. And now my, my piece is turned and I've got a little bit of extra fabric sticking out here at the points. Just like I said we would. Now, when we're sewing, we can tuck that in with our needle. Okay. Um, and that's really simple to do. So don't ever cut this off, because if you cut that off, it's really hard to turn, and, and you'll have lots of raw edges, raw edges. little uh, threads hanging out. So it's easier to turn it when it's long. Long. Okay, and then we're going to do a circle, because a circle is sometimes hard. And you'll notice that our little pattern has a couple circles. We have the large circle and the small one. I'm going to demonstrate on the small one, because um, the large ones is just a simple shape, and we can probably do that the regular way. But on a small circle, I do a little bit different. And what I do is I've prepped it all the same way with the starch on the, on the edge of the seam allowance. But now I want to get that edge standing up so that I don't get any ugly folds when I'm pressing. So what I do is on this I use the tip of my iron and I just kind of tack the edge up over. And I go around the circle just kind of like a clock. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So I'm just dividing my circle in four. And depending how big the circle is, this one's got room, so I'm going to do another little tack in between. So I've got to have about eight little times where I just kind of tack this edge up over. And that's going to prevent creases on the front. Uh-huh. And um, what this does is when I take my, now I'm ready, I've got this, the edges kind of sticking mm -hmm. up, kind of like a little um, muffin cup. Uh -huh. And now when I take my iron and just go across this, is, see it's just going to fold those edges in. And I'm going to have a nice smooth edge at the crease on the edge, but all of the extra little folds are on the inside and they won't show. So I can run my iron. You always want to run your iron from the outside toward the center of the piece. Okay, now we'll just pull this, the rest of this in. Now all of our raw edges are on the inside. Let's see how simple that was. And now the outside is nice and smooth. And it's ready to apply to our background. So now we're going to do that next. We're going to baste it on. So okay. let's get the pieces ready. Here's our little, uh, got the right side up. And I've pre-pressed this um, just to mark it. I folded it in half and in half again so mm -hmm. that I know where the center is. So the center's here and you can tell because we folded it twice. Uh huh. And then um, we're just kind of lay these how they're going to be. Um, I've already 
cut this uh, black circle and we've got that little circle and we've got a couple more petals here. Do you want to take the template out of that one, Kimberly? Oh, got extras. Yeah, go ahead and use that one. It's looking good. Here's a couple more leaves that I've, I did a little earlier. Now we're ready to baste it together. So watch the next video and we'll teach you how to stitch either by hand or by machine.